Welcome to MedScroll Clinical Case Files, where complex medicine meets clear thinking. Today, we explore the case of Mr. Reginald Miles, a 46-year-old man with Marfan syndrome and progressive aortic root dilatation, layered with chronic pain, pancreatitis, and alcohol misuse. This is the kind of multi-system case every RACP candidate should be prepared for. Let's break it down system by system and build a structured, exam-ready approach. Good morning. I'd like to present the case of Mr. Reginald Miles, a 46-year-old European male with a complex background of Marfan syndrome, alcohol-related chronic pancreatitis, chronic pain, and bilateral knee osteoarthritis. His main issue currently is progressive aortic root dilatation on background of connective tissue disease. Mr. Miles was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome in his early 20s based on phenotypic features and family history. Key features include tall stature, arachnodactyly, pectus excavatum, and high arched palate. Aortic root dilatation was first noted at age 25 with an echocardiographic diameter of 3.8 centimeters. Over the years, this has gradually progressed. The most recent echocardiogram shows a root diameter of 4.8 centimeters, up from 4.4 centimeters one year ago. He remains asymptomatic from a cardiovascular standpoint and is currently monitored by cardiology with six monthly imaging. He is on Losartan and Metaprolol for aortic protection and hypertension, which remains well controlled. He has not had any prior cardiac surgery and has no history of aortic dissection. Surgical planning is now being discussed as he is nearing the threshold for elective aortic root replacement. He has been educated about red flag symptoms such as sudden chest or back pain. Mr. Miles's second major issue is alcohol-related chronic pancreatitis, diagnosed five years ago following multiple hospital presentations with epigastric pain radiating to the back. Imaging confirmed pancreatic calcification and ductal changes. He does not have diabetes at this stage, and his HbA1c remains within normal limits. He takes Creon 25,000 to 50,000 units per meal and reports that when he misses doses, he experiences steatorrhea and worsening abdominal discomfort. He describes his chronic pain as persistent and dull, sometimes flaring after alcohol or large meals. His pain is currently managed with long-acting oxycodone 10 milligrams twice daily and PRN immediate release doses. He has trialed amitriptyline and pregabalin in the past with limited benefit. He is under review by the pain service and a multimodal approach is being planned, including psychological input, physical therapy, and weaning from opioids where possible. He continues to drink approximately six to eight standard drinks per day, mainly beer and spirits. Despite past engagement with addiction services, he has had several relapses triggered by life stressors. His alcohol use has contributed to loss of employment, relationship breakdown, and ongoing social isolation. His father also had a history of alcohol misuse and died in his 50s from liver disease. Mr. Miles does not have cirrhosis based on recent imaging and fibrosis scoring, though he has a background of alcohol-related gastritis, which is currently inactive. The third major problem is chronic pain disorder, which is multifactorial, stemming from chronic pancreatitis, osteoarthritis, and possibly a central sensitization component. It significantly impacts his quality of life, functional independence, and adherence to care. Pain is exacerbated by psychological distress and has a complex interplay with his substance use. He also suffers from bilateral knee osteoarthritis, with imaging confirming moderate changes. He describes persistent aching pain, worse with weight-bearing. Oral NSAIDs are avoided due to his hypertension and GI risk. He uses paracetamol regularly and topical diclofenac gel. 
He awaits physiotherapy review for strengthening and offloading strategies. Other medical issues include hypertension, which is currently well-controlled on Losartan and Metoprolol, targeting vascular protection. Vitamin D deficiency on replacement. Past depressive episode previously treated with antidepressants, now resolved. On examination, Mr. Miles is tall and thin with obvious marfanoid features. Vitals are stable with a blood pressure of 124 over 78 and heart rate of 64 beats per minute. Cardiovascular and respiratory exams were unremarkable with no murmurs or signs of heart failure. Abdominal examination revealed mild epigastric tenderness. Musculoskeletal exam showed bilateral bony knee changes and antalgic gait. Neurological exam was normal. In summary, Mr. Reginald Miles is a 46-year-old man with Marfan syndrome and progressive aortic root dilatation, nearing surgical threshold. He also has alcohol-related chronic pancreatitis, chronic pain disorder, and bilateral knee osteoarthritis. His ongoing alcohol use and pain create challenges in management and adherence. Problem list. Marfan syndrome with progressive aortic root dilatation, 4.8 centimeters. Chronic pancreatitis, alcohol-related, with exocrine insufficiency and chronic abdominal pain. Chronic pain disorder, under pain service review. Alcohol misuse, with social and functional impacts. Bilateral knee osteoarthritis, functionally limiting. Hypertension, well-controlled. Starting with his Marfan syndrome and progressive aortic root dilatation, my primary goal is to prevent dissection or rupture. His aortic root has progressed to 4.8 centimeters, and he is under close cardiology surveillance. The threshold for surgery in Marfan patients is typically 5.0 centimeters, or earlier if there's rapid progression or family history of dissection. Therefore, I would continue his current beta blocker and ARB regimen for aortic protection and maintain six monthly echocardiography. Education regarding warning signs such as sudden chest or back pain is essential, and I would ensure that a surgical referral is underway as he nears intervention criteria. Next, addressing his chronic pancreatitis, symptom control, and nutritional optimization are the priorities. He takes Creon for exocrine insufficiency, and I would reinforce adherence with every meal and snack to prevent steatorrhea and nutrient malabsorption. Given ongoing alcohol use, further damage is likely, so abstinence is crucial to stabilize his disease. I would consider involving a dietitian for ongoing assessment and fat-soluble vitamin monitoring including vitamin D. His chronic pain disorder, which spans musculoskeletal, pancreatic, and likely central pain components, requires a multimodal management plan. He is currently on opioid therapy, which I would aim to taper as tolerated, in coordination with the pain service. Adjuncts like pregabalin or duloxetine could be revisited. Non-pharmacological strategies including physiotherapy and psychological input, are essential. Engaging a pain psychologist for cognitive behavioral therapy would address the emotional contributors to pain. Regarding his alcohol misuse, he has had intermittent engagement with AOD services, but continues to drink heavily. I'd aim to re-engage him with a local service, explore pharmacologic support such as naltrexone, and initiate motivational counseling. Addressing the psychological burden, loss of employment, and lack of social support may help facilitate change. His care would benefit from a social work referral to explore structured community supports and future planning. His bilateral knee osteoarthritis contributes significantly to functional limitation. Given the GI and cardiovascular risks, I would avoid systemic NSAIDs, he is on regular paracetamol and topical NSAIDs, which he tolerates. I would expedite physiotherapy input for strengthening and weight-bearing adaptation and consider intra-articular steroid injections if pain remains uncontrolled. Lastly, his hypertension is well-controlled. 
and I would continue current therapy with Losartan and Metoprolol, which are also cardioprotective in Marfan syndrome. Regular monitoring of renal function and electrolytes would be required, especially in the setting of creon use and chronic illness. Thank you. How would you approach a patient with alcohol misuse who is reluctant to stop but faces social and health consequences? My approach would be empathetic and non-judgmental using motivational interviewing techniques. I would validate Mr. Miles' experience and explore his goals, highlighting the link between alcohol and his pancreatitis. I'd aim to re-engage him with addiction services, considering pharmacological options like naltrexone and social work involvement to address barriers to treatment such as isolation or housing insecurity. What are the psychosocial impacts of chronic illness and pain in a case like this? Chronic pain and illness can significantly impair identity, mood, and function. Mr. Miles has lost employment and social connections and feels frustration over his dependence and symptoms. These factors can worsen pain perception and reduce engagement with care. Psychological support, pain psychology, and social reintegration through community supports or peer groups are critical. What ethical challenges arise in managing chronic opioid use in this context? The main ethical challenge is balancing the patient's right to pain relief with the risk of harm from long-term opioid use, especially given his history of alcohol misuse. I would ensure clear documentation, involve a multidisciplinary team, and maintain transparency with Mr. Miles about goals, risks, and expectations. Regular review and a stepwise tapering strategy are important to ensure safety and autonomy. How would you ensure this patient engages with multidisciplinary care? I'd involve him actively in decision-making, ensuring he understands how each team member contributes. I would streamline appointments, assign a care coordinator, and use patient-centered language. Building trust is key, particularly given previous care fatigue. Linking his health goals to functional outcomes, such as improved mobility or social connection, can enhance buy-in. What considerations are important when discussing the family history of alcohol misuse and its impact? Acknowledging intergenerational trauma is important. His father's alcohol misuse may shape Mr. Miles' own patterns and sense of self-efficacy. It's vital to approach this sensitively, validate his experience, and highlight that recovery is possible. Genetic risk, coping mechanisms, and family dynamics should be explored during counseling. How would you support Mr. Miles in re-engaging with meaningful activity? I would refer him to social work and possibly an occupational therapist to assess his capacity for structured activity. Tailored vocational rehab or community-based volunteer opportunities could rebuild confidence. Addressing barriers such as pain, substance use, and mobility limitations is essential before reintegration can be successful. What safety concerns do you have for someone in his situation living alone? There is a risk of falls, medication misuse, poor nutrition, and unrecognized medical deterioration. I would assess his functional status, review home safety, and engage services such as community nursing or a case manager if concerns escalate, involving guardianship or supported accommodation could be discussed. If aortic root surgery is planned, what preoperative social and functional supports are essential? Given his alcohol use, functional limitations, and psychosocial background, Pre-op optimization includes alcohol cessation, nutritional assessment, and psychological readiness. Post-operative recovery would require adequate home supports, rehabilitation, and medication management. Involvement of his general practitioner, cardiologist, and social worker would be key to coordinating this care. How is Marfan syndrome diagnosed and what are the key diagnostic features? Marfan syndrome is diagnosed clinically using the revised Ghent criteria. These include aortic root dilatation or dissection, ectopia lentis, 
FBN1 gene mutation and a systemic score based on skeletal, ocular, and skin features. Mr. Miles meets the clinical diagnosis based on aortic root dilatation, systemic features including tall stature, arachnodactyly, high arched palate, and a family history of similar features. Genetic testing may support the diagnosis but is not required if major criteria are met. What are the thresholds for surgical intervention in aortic root dilatation in Marfan syndrome? In Marfan syndrome, elective aortic root replacement is considered when the diameter exceeds 5.0 centimeters or earlier in cases of rapid progression greater than 0.5 centimeters per year, family history of dissection, or additional risk factors such as hypertension or smoking. In Mr. Miles' case, the current measurement is 4.8 centimeters, so we are closely monitoring for further progression. How do you monitor aortic root dilatation and what is the preferred imaging modality? Surveillance typically involves transthoracic echocardiography every 6 to 12 months, depending on the rate of aortic root growth. In patients with poor acoustic windows or for surgical planning, CT angiography or cardiac MRI may be used to obtain precise aortic dimensions. Mr. Miles has echocardiograms every six months. What is the role of beta blockers and ARBs in Marfan syndrome? Beta blockers, such as metaprolol, reduce aortic wall stress by lowering heart rate and contractility. ARBs like Los Artan have been shown in some studies to inhibit TGF beta signaling and reduce the rate of aortic root growth. In Mr. Miles's case, both medications are used concurrently for optimal aortic protection. Discuss the management principles of chronic pancreatitis. Management focuses on symptom relief, nutritional support, and preventing complications. Mr. Miles takes pancreatic enzyme replacement to address steatorrhea. Chronic abdominal pain is managed pharmacologically and non-pharmacologically, although opioids are currently used due to refractory symptoms. Abstinence from alcohol is key to slowing disease progression, and dietetic input is essential to manage nutritional status. What complications of chronic pancreatitis are you monitoring for in this patient? I'm monitoring for diabetes mellitus due to pancreatic islet cell destruction, malabsorption-related deficiencies, and potential complications such as pancreatic pseudocysts or biliary obstruction. Currently, Mr. Miles does not have diabetes, but I regularly review his HbA1c and perform abdominal imaging as clinically indicated. How would you approach opioid prescribing in a patient with a history of alcohol misuse and chronic pain? This requires a cautious and structured approach. Mr. Miles is currently on long-acting opioids, but I would aim to reduce this with pain service support. Alternatives include antidepressants for neuropathic components and psychological therapy, a written opioid contract, regular review, and coordination with addiction medicine would be essential. What is your long-term strategy for managing this patient's hypertension? His hypertension is well controlled on Los Aten and Metaprolol, which also provide aortic protection in Marfan syndrome. My strategy would be to continue these agents, regularly monitor renal function and electrolytes, and ensure adherence. Lifestyle advice, although limited by his chronic pain, remains part of the holistic approach. Thanks for watching MedScroll Clinical Case Files. Mr. Miles' case reminds us that medicine isn't just about guidelines, it's about balancing pathology, patient context, and long term care planning. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more exam-focused clinical cases just like this. Drop your thoughts in the comments. How would you manage Mr. Miles?